Hello everybody and welcome to a new Cenozoic expansion di discussion video. So the Cenozoic expansion is an idea that's been thrown out there for a long time about its potential coming into Jurassic World Evolution 2. And um, yeah, I would love to see it at, for our Christmas DLC this year. It certainly makes a lot of sense given relation to Ice Age and um, other eras of the Cenozoic like the Eocene the Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene, Holocene. Um, species from across the Cenozoic would be perfect in this pack. And one of the most notorious being the Smilodon, or the Sabertooth Cat, a species that showed up in Camp Cretaceous Season 4 quite briefly, but um, many people don't really like the design from Camp Cretaceous, so uh, they've asked for Frontier to probably give their spin on the animal as a variant. And something similar to life on our planet would certainly be a good design, as that design certainly fits with the primal aesthetics that um, Cenozoic depictions often go for in like regular media, not necessarily paleo media, but you get what I mean. Um, another iconic species is the woolly mammoth, or just Mammothus primogenius. Um, this animal is one that you cannot just skip out on when it comes to a Cenozoic expansion and is a must-have for any Cenozoic DLC. Megatherium, a giant ground sloth from South America, is another obvious pick. They are one of the largest land animals that has ever existed in South America, and would certainly make a fine addition to the game. I know a particular YouTuber that would really like to have a sloth in Jurassic World Evolution too. Another species is Didicurus, a giant armadillo with a club tail from South America as well. They are a bizarre animal, um, the size of a car, and with big dome shells to um, armor their body against attack. So this would be an odd pick, but certainly a worthy pick. Um, another notorious predator of the Cenozoic is the terror bird. Um, in particular, I've chosen Titanus, as it is the one that is most likely to have come into contact with Smilodon. Um, and this species would be fantastic for sort of filling that gap between dinosaurs and birds where you've got a bird so terrifying that you'd think it was a dinosaur. But, I mean, obviously I don't think that, but um, Titanus would certainly make a fine addition to the game. Blasmatherium, also known as the Siberian Unicorn, was a large rhino relative from the Pleistocene era. I was introduced to this species in Prehistoric Park, and I assume many others were too. And this would be a perfect addition to any Cenozoic park. I mean, we can of course get some alternatives like Coelodonta or another one I have a little bit later. Um, filling the Avery slot, we have the Argentavis, a giant relative of condors and vultures that was I'm pretty sure the introduction for this species was primarily through Ark. And this species would make a great addition as a feathered fury in the skies of your Averys. The lagoon slot I've chosen is Basilosaurus, a prehistoric whale from the Eocene era that dominated the Tethys Sea before it dried up and became the Sahara Desert. Um, this whale would utilize a new mechanic that I have um, later on in the update features. But many people think that instead of Basilosaurus, we could get the iconic Megalodon. Now, this species was hyped up for the prehistoric marine species pack. I do apologize about that, though. I was so sure about it being Megalodon. Um, and, yeah. So Megalodon could easily fit into this pack as well, but I think focusing on the introduction of mammals rather than bringing a fish into it, and also birds as well. Um, but a big shark is, yeah, just a perfect predator that I think it could go into a carnivorous species pack instead, filling that lagoon slot. Um, another large um nasal ornamented um hoofed animal is megacerops a species from the late eocene that would make a fine addition to the game with its bizarre appearance it certainly fits the jurassic world aesthetic megalania a large lizard from australia um would certainly be a great addition to see in jurassic world evolution 2 filling that reptile slot of the cenozoic with one of its most iconic residents um, Megaloceros, um, this is the last mega animal from the Cenozoic that um, I would really want in this pack. Um, it's a giant deer 
with large antlers as long as a human. And yeah, this guy would make a perfect like almost fodder for uh, like the the dinosaurs. But yeah, so it, it it would also be one of the first animals to show sexual dimorphism, as the males adorn huge antlers, and the does do not. I just say bucks, not males, but um, or stags. I don't know anymore. <laughs> but um, yeah, this would be a perfect animal um, for the pack, if not for like me limiting it to eight animals to sort of like uh, fit it to like a plant zoo animal pack. Because in this pack, you wouldn't really be getting dinosaur variants or skins. So having more species is much better. But th these five are just alternatives. And the speak of the fifth, we, we have the dodo. A bird that was wiped out during the Holocene era by um, early explorers that visited the island of Mauritius and thought these guys were just delicious. But um, that seems to not be the case. Apparently, dodo was terrible in taste. And instead, the dodo became extinct due to invasive species eating eggs, destroying nests, and killing many adult birds, driving this poor old bird to extinction. But it would be a fine addition to Jurassic World Evolution 2, as it is very thematic of the Cenozoic era. Um, some new maps that I could see coming into this um, expansion would be one in the Ural Mountains of Russia, a good place to house your mammoths, elasmotheriums, all that sort of stuff. And the final map, which I'm thinking could be the proper map for this expansion, would be Chilean Patagonia, a place dominated by high peaks and open plains as well as glacial lakes. This would be a very aesthetically pleasing map to see, as it has such a diverse range of biomes that, that is perfect for um, ancient mammals. On to like a pitch for a campaign story, I'll read it to you. With the population of dinosaurs on Earth continuing to rise, Biosyn has run out of space in the Dolomites facility. New CEO Ramsey Cole has enlisted the help of Claire Deering, Owen Grady, Ian Malcolm, and the DFW to assist in setting up a new program to resurrect more extinct species. Cenozoic species such as the fearsome Smilodon, Mighty Mammothus, and Colossal Megatherium all require different things. Exploring the locations of Russia's Ural Mountains and the plains of Chilean Patagonia, you will experiment where these animals are more suited to being housed and being housed alongside familiar franchise dinosaurs such as Gallimimus, Triceratops, and Brachiosaurus, among others, all being housed together to create a sustained and balanced paleo ecosystem where both Cenozoic and Mesozoic animals can coexist peacefully. Utilizing a makeshift biosyn building set for working in the field, these new assets will be housed by wooden and mesh barriers as they are not quite as powerful as the dinosaurs. And here we have um, my idea of a good wooden barrier would be similar to that from Prehistoric Park. A very iconic looking fence, but I'm sure Frontier could put their own spin on it. And of course, mesh fences that are used to house predators and primates in captivity. So that would be good. Um, onto a few update features. Like, I'm pretty sure those barriers I've put as part of an update as well. Um, breathing at the surface. So this is something that all marine reptiles have to do to, you know, live. And it would be something that Basilosaurus would adopt as well. As air-breathing animals, they should be able to go up to the surface, take a breath of air, and then dive straight back down. And there could be time limits for how long they're underwater and how long they're above water. Um, but yeah, that, that could be... Oh, I say above water. <laughs> I mean, Nothosaurus and Archelon can, but I don't think a whale would be able to. Um, another um, behavior I'd love to see is breaching for some of the marine reptiles. Um, species like Ichthyosaurs, so Shonisaurus and Ichthyosaurus we have currently, as well as the Mosasaurus and Basilosaurus, would be able to breach out of the water to display their grace. Um, another update feature I'd love to see is, well, new live feeders. So getting the cow feeder from Jurassic Park, the pig feeder from Jurassic World, deer feeder from Dominion, and probably a live shark for the lagoons to feed to your Basilosaurus and various other marine species. Uh, another behavior that I'd like to see is stalking. So predators creeping up on their prey to spring a surprise attack. Right now, the predators just run up to their prey. They don't actually like prowl. Um, but I'd love to see it like a T-Rex quietly putting one, one foot in front of the other, creeping up on a Triceratops and then lunging towards it. 
that'd be a cool behavior to see. And I'm sure Smilodon will certainly um, adopt this behavior in the game as well as they are part of the big cat family or like um, wild cat family because they're not exactly Panthera. But um, yeah, they would certainly u utilize this behavior well. Another highly requested one is walking for pterosaurs and other Avery species. With Argentavis being a bird, I'm sure it would walk around um, a few times on the ground. So species like Quetzalcoatlus as well would certainly do well to have this behavior added to their rig. And um, yeah, that's just the last update feature I have for this one. So yeah. If you have any other ideas for what a Cenozoic expansion and the accompanying update can um, bring to the game, do leave it in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Who knows, a new DLC might be announced by then. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but yeah. Bye-bye.